Hey guys, and welcome to another Wackiness HD figure reviews. So if you haven't figured it out, sit back, relax, and enjoy, because we will be taking a look at Ava Unit 1. Hello and welcome everyone to a rather different review than you're used to from me. I'm your host Chilwak Miss Prime and that's because we're going to be taking a look at a figure from a well-known Japanese anime series. You might know the series as, that's right, Evangelion. And this being released from Bandai Japan, this is the Soul Chigokan's GX14 Ava Unit 1 that we're going to be taking a look at today. Evangelion is a series I got into more into the time of the rebuild of Evangelion Project. Although my experience lightly did touch the Neon Genesis series, it was actually the 1.11 movie that really got me hooked and got me interested in purchasing my very own Unit 1 figure. Choosing a Unit 1 though proved to be a little more involved than I actually expected though. There are a lot of Ava Unit 1 figures out there to choose from, so my best recommendation is do your research and choose one that hits on the elements that you particularly like. This Soul Chigokin did it for me with all its beautiful paintwork and crisp details, as well as what really also sold me was all the features that came with it in the accessories count. And this guy comes with a lot of accessories as you can see. So let's start things off with the hands. He comes with two sets, which is pretty common. Two fists and two open splayed out hands. The open hands are nice, but I find more times than not, they just kind of give Unit 1 a kind of, I don't know, monster hands. I'm going to get you kind of look, if you know what I mean. But he does do it rather good. I have to hand it to him. The fists are really the more useful of the sets, though, since they can be used in unison with holding weapon accessories, such as his pistol here. The pistol is nice inclusion in the set, especially since he used it many times in the episode of Evangelion, so you can recreate many of the scenes that you're used to seeing in Neon Genesis. Also included is a pallet rifle, and a case to store the rifle in. It wouldn't be Unit 1 we all know without this iconic addition, but I really do like how this looks. This is the one accessory I find that looks fantastic no matter how you pose it it seems. This couple with some rather nice articulation results in some really nice action posing possibilities for this Ava figure as well. You can also store the whole case and rifle by clipping the case onto either of the shoulder pylons, but to be honest, it's not particularly my favorite option. Which brings us to the next feature that comes with this Ava. It's his bazooka, which he used a couple times in the TV series. Again, a really nice option that they threw in there for you. Not something particularly I'm fond of, but a nice addition nonetheless. Now here's some accessories I really am fond of. Surprising, considering I thought these two swords would simply be toss away items for me. But they won me over in the end. Both the smaller sword and the larger one come with their very own sheath, as well as they're arrayed in brilliant matching purple and green paint to match the Ava. As well as they're made of stiff and good quality plastic, so no floppy swords here guys, that's great. The Ava has the ability to dual wield a single sword or both, which ends up making him look kind of samurai stylized, which is something I absolutely adore. Go figure. I don't think the swords were ever used in the series. I've never seen Unit 1 use these swords in anything I've seen. So if he has, maybe you could tell me in the comments if I'm wrong. But like the pallet rifle, you're able to store the swords upon the Ava's shoulder pylons via an additional clip which is included just for this. It looks a little bit better than the rifle, but I'm still not keen on it. And speaking of the shoulder pylons, you get two sets with this guy. The first set are a slim, more cartoon accurate set, while the others are a bit bulkier. Both sets are held on with a clever magnet system that I kind of rather like, and they keep them held on pretty tightly, I have to say. The bulkier shoulders come with their own features of their own. On the left we have a stored blasting weapon ever only used once at the end of an episode. And on the opposite, is as you would expect where the unit one can store his progressive knife. This was actually a real selling point to me since this is a pretty specific to this figure feature that he not only comes with a progressive knife but he has the ability to store it within his shoulder. The only downside being that when the Ava is actually holding the knife it's a little bit looser than I would have liked but not bad all things considered. 
hey guys, guess what? This guy is Ava Unit 1, which usually means to most people he's going to be able to pose pretty dynamically. And I think for rather pretty much die-cast metal guy, he does really good. Um, basically, let's uh, start off. He's got a ball-jointed head up top here, which is really nice, as well as a bit of a hinge at the bottom of the neck. So these two things worked in unison. Get him some really amazing joints. Oh, hey, and he also moves side to side on there. So I didn't even know that, but I guess this is probably a ball joint in here. So even more posability options than I originally thought. So that's cool. It's also got an opening and closing mouth, as you could see there. Um, mine is a little bit loose and sometimes has a tendency to drop down, but you can get it to stay when it wants. <laughs> And I don't think it wants to today. That's not bad, I guess. So we'll go with that. seem to be kind of loose bits down here, these metal bits. Um, nobody seems to know whether it's designed to do this, but it gives you a little extra outwards movement off these little pylons. They kind of move in and out. Um, just be aware of that as well. Would not want to see anybody break anything, but um, you can do that, which kind of brings us to the arms. And as you can see, it is restricted a little bit on the outwards movement, but... You do have a fair amount there, if you look at him right when his arms are back. I mean, that that's a good amount. I've seen worse on some figures, so that's that's really nice. Um, of course, the arms can move full on back like that, as well as they can move forwards. As well as the elbows have pretty much double jointed movement there. Um, the shoulder pylon gets in the way a little bit, but um, you can always remove the pylon if you want. That always works. His hand is on... A ball joint as well so you get lots of movement there he can shake his fist at you sir get off my lawn you kids and so forth um, his abdomen here he's got a bit of a waist like an ab crunch which is really nice it's not huge by any means but you get just just enough movement I would say that really makes some poses work as well as it works as a waist joint and twists slightly now you can't go much further than that it is limited so be aware of that but I don't, I don't see how anyone would need anything more than that, to be honest. His hips here are not on ball joints, even though they kind of look like they are. They're on a universal joint, which means you get some outwards movement. Again, restricted on the outwards movement this way, um, but not bad. So, as well as they can go backwards quite a ways, but they are limited quite a bit on the forward movement there. That's about as far as they can go. I don't know if they can go anywhere past that. It feels really tight on mine. I wouldn't want to push it past that. So He's also got double jointed knees. As well as you get a little bit of a thigh swivel up here at the top. Again, nothing huge, but it's there. And then down here on the feet, which is kind of cool. It's got a ball joint, but it's attached to this green guard here. So you get a huge amount of range of this ankle. But it's it's kind of off-putting when you first see it because it's kind of it's not what we're used to seeing on most figures. So, but it works really rather well. You get some some decent decent posability, as well as a toe joint, so he can bend his toe that way. So, pretty much anything you want there. I mean, given most figures, even looking at most Transformers, I'd say this guy has particularly really good jointing. And like I said before, given this guy's all die-cast metal mostly. That's really, really um, surprising and really, really good. <laughs> the GX14 figure also comes with an umbilical cable that you can use in unison with the figure. Made of a soft rubbery plastic, you just plug it into a hole on his back and it recreates many memorable scenes. But the length of the wire sometimes leaves the cord feeling just like it's been cut sadly, drawing me out of the illusion at times. And still guys, there's some more features. I know, right? Included are three entry plugs. This again really sold me on the uniqueness of the GX14 figure. Using one of these really small accessories of the entry plug, you can plug it into the back of the AVA. This is a really unique ability that the GX14 has, and it stores it right in the compartment just as seen on the series. As well as you open the compartment and press a button activated gimmick, it will launch the plug, just as it would when ejecting the entry plug from the unit. Be careful though guys because it does launch very well and you could lose it. Of course you can store it within the compartment if you'd like. 
The last feature that comes with the GX14 is a stand that can both be used as a display, but also as a way to store all the accessories that come with the GX14. This is a nice addition and kind of keeps everything self-contained. It comes with a really nice Soul Chigokin Evangelion plaque as well, and it keeps all your accessories tidy along with your GX14 figure. What's really nice about this stand though is it mimics the holding restraints used in the cartoon series. And one of the key features of the stand in itself is some moving pylons around the shoulder restraints, just like it would release from the shoulder pylons in the cartoon series. Well, with all those many accessories, I think the GX14 evokes his on-screen counterpart rather well, giving you many display options to go along with the figure. Being a primarily all die-cast metal figure, I was really impressed by the versatility of the posing options, without much worry or concern needed to whether it could support the added weight of having so much die-cast on him. It also struck me as how well and not out of place this figure looked along some of my other Avas, which primarily tend to be Revel Techs. All in all, Soul Chigokin's GX14 turned out to be the right choice for me guys, for my Ava Unit 1 display. But not without some sacrifice, sadly. One of my biggest disappointments with this figure for me is its inability to do any real convincing sprint start or running poses, which is something Unit 1 is well known for. But given all the other good things that are going for it, hey, I can overlook that. For such a feature, I guess I would have to look at a different figure, but there are many figures out there that have that option, whereas this guy comes with some very unique features. With all the good features of the GX14, I didn't hugely get dissuaded because of it. The storage of the progressive knife, the entry plug storage, and the eject gimmick that go with it, the opening mouth, and even the swords that won me over caused me to take real notice of this version of the Unit 1 AVA. I think if you've liked what you've seen and you're considering getting an AVA 1 figure, consider what the GX14 has. It's a really very unique Unit 1, in a sea of somewhat bland and subpar versions that seem to be quite frequent today. I'm glad with my purchase and I hope I've given you a good look at this guy. Anyways guys, this has been Chilwakamus Prime saying thanks for watching and we will see you all next time for some more reviews. Mm-hmm.